What advice would I give someone who's coming back to the hobby after a long time away? I answer this question and more in this month's Q&A. Nick speaking and welcome to this video. And if you're new to the channel and you want to keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40K, then please subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss an upload. Okay, so time for this month's Q&A and this is where I answer all of your questions from the previous Q&A video. Got some awesome questions and I can't wait to answer them. First of all though, I've got a question for you. Okay, so in 2019, I'm thinking about doing some commission work. I think it'd be a lot of fun and potentially help me earn a little bit of extra money. Now, talking of money, this is what my question is based on. How much does one charge for commissions? I'm very interested to hear if you're a commission painter or if you've had some commissions done yourself. How much do you pay? What is the going rate for a commission? Is it done via per project? Is it done via per hour? I'd be very interested to hear any feedback and advice regarding commission work. Now, whilst you're there answering my question, how about asking me a question for next month's Q&A? Which brings me nicely on to this month's questions. Okay, so here we go. Now, I tried to do this video in a bit more of a relaxed style. So I've got my cup of coffee, so warning, there will be drinking in this video, possibly even slurping. And I'm gonna answer the questions without editing the video, or at least with as little editing as possible. Now I do still have a bit of a cold, and at this moment in time, probably the lights, my eye seems to be wanting to water. So bear with me, but the show must go on as they say. So let's get on with the show and the first question which is from Tassie, and they say, where is my save by Slanesh? I do want to see you play Slanesh. Uh, that is a good question, where is save by Slanesh? Well, it's coming. Um, I haven't done save by Slanesh or any of my noise marines painting for um, probably about six weeks now. I've been concentrating on other stuff um, and I am definitely going to do my Noise Marines for next New Year Painting Challenge. So basically, in 2019, there's going to be some more Slanesh videos coming, and I've got a very special unboxing uh, coming as well. So Slanesh is on the way. Not sure about when the battle reports will come, uh, but they will come, hopefully, sometime next year. So thank you for the question. And the next one's a long one, so I will have some coffee. So the next one is from Dave Dodge, and he says, I was talking to someone at Games Workshop the other day, and they thought that Forge World and Games Workshop are going to merge as the Games Workshop range is going up in quality and catching up these days. I personally wouldn't mind seeing Forge World products on the shelves of Games Workshop stores so that Warhammer 30k and minis are promoted. This isn't viable for every Games Workshop store in the world as the Forge World stock is produced in smaller quantities and the stock is expensive and cannot just sit there on the shelves for ages unsold. However, I wouldn't think that having Forge World products on the shelves in store in major cities and capitals is not a bad idea, say exclusively Manchester, Birmingham, Edinburgh, London for the UK. This is tricky to do for capital cities though, such as Paris and Madrid, as they tend to have lots of smaller games workshops in the centre of the capital, to garner interest from the locals, and Forge World products in each shop is simply not going to have shift Forge World stock, and simply is not going to shift Forge World stock. So actually no question there, but um, a very interesting chat. I wish I knew more about the, the business of uh, Games Workshop and Forge World. It seems a very odd setup. I think it would be great if uh, Forge World stuff was available in Games Workshop stores. Not quite sure why that isn't the case. There obviously is a reason. Um, I don't think it's going to happen because it doesn't seem like that is the way they do business. It's almost like they are just two separate companies. 
are they two separate companies? I don't know, I don't know enough. Um, if you know, let me know in the comments box below, but uh, it was an interesting um, concept and it would be great to actually see that, I think, in shops. So the next question is from Ross Middleton and he says, my question for the next video is, what advice would you give to someone coming back to the hobby from a long period away? This is a good question because I've never done that. Um, I started the hobby when I was 30 and I've not stopped. Uh, so I've never done that. I think what advice would I give them? What I would do is basically say, have a good think about what you enjoyed about the hobby when you used to do it and what you didn't enjoy about the hobby. And then if there was a particular thing that you didn't enjoy about it, probably try to avoid that this time. So let's, for example, say, you know, this person, I, you know, I loved playing the game, but I just really didn't enjoy painting them. Well, you could, you could maybe advise them, say, well, you don't have to paint in full, full detail, you know. Uh, there's very easy ways to paint. I mean, for example, you could just spray your army white and then use washes, paint with washes, you know, very simple. So, or, or maybe you could even say, well, it might be worth getting a commission paint uh, done. You know, so basically advise them to look at the positives of what they enjoyed about the hobby and concentrate on that um, a bit more. So that would be my advice. Thank you for the question. Next question is from Birinid 40 k And he says, great video, Nick. And your shout out video is still very much appreciated. Uh, I don't know if I've said this yet, but I think almost everyone that watched came over and subscribed. Well, that's, that is great news, uh, Birinid, but I could already tell that uh, from the videos you were making that you were going to do well. I think when I did the shout outs, I think you were on about 600 subscribers. We managed to get you up to I think around 1,000 subscribers, something like that. Uh, but now you're on 4,000 subscribers. And that's only done with the awesome videos that you do. So well done. And I've, I will say it, I'll say it again. Uh, I think you will overtake me in subscribers, but we will see. Anyway, um, he also says, I've been having a heck of a time finding the time for editing lately, trying to think of ways to streamline and simplify the video process so I can post more often. What about, uh, with about three images per minute and 12 minutes videos requires 36 images to find, edit, script, record, editing, and the actual video itself. Watching your channel really is an inspiration. The way you get it done and stick to the posting schedule is something I really admire. Uh, thank you, Bironage, and you're, you're right, it's very hard. Um, and I used to upload five days a week and I took the decision about six months ago to upload three days a week um, and I'm really glad I did. In actual fact I'm probably spending more time on the videos than I did when I did the five videos a week um, but there's not quite as much planning needed for the video so I've got a bit more breathing space but I still put the time into each individual video uh, for to try and make the videos as good as I can get them. Now sometimes you do have to compromise uh, if you've got, especially when you've got a fixed schedule, there's certain things that I would love to do in some of the videos which I just don't have time for. Like for example when you're talking about army list and stuff I'd love to have maybe the army list scrolling up um, but then you've got to go in and I've got to make the, uh, the titles for that and then put them in and it just takes more time and you know people sometimes don't realize how long certain things take. You know, it can take you like half an hour just to record that one like five second clip sometimes, depending on what you're doing in there. So it's all about compromise, uh, trying to get as high quality as you can with uh, the time that you have available to you. And sometimes planning is the way to go. If you can plan your video in, with enough time to spare, maybe work on it in piecemeal rather than recording it all in one day, which is how I did my uh, Necron Core Tactics series. The last two videos I recorded over a week, whereas usually I record the video in a day and edit in the day. Uh, but yeah, 
So good luck with that. Um, time is obviously the biggest thing that we are up against, not just with this hobby, but in life. In life. Okay, so the next question is from Capitan Morgan's War Games, and he says, "Would you ever consider painting some Necrons in a different theme, so you could get more than one detachment for a tawny that had that type of restriction?" There is another question, but let's answer that one. Um, would I consider it? I would consider it, but I don't think I would do it. Unless I became more of a tournament player than I am. Um, but I like my Necrons, I like the way they're painted, and I don't really want to paint them any other way. I know Games Workshop, things will change. So if I, for example, get a load of Wraiths and just paint them all, Novok Dynasty, it will all change in the next edition. Um, and I'll have to repaint them or strip them or not use them or, or whatever. So, no. Um, and that's mainly because I'm not really a tournament competitive player. I enjoy playing to win. Um, and the competitive scene can be fun. But I also like playing for fun as well. And unusual lists and theme lists, etc. So I'd rather go to a tournament with the handicap of one dynasty and try my best uh, than make an army, paint an army specifically to win. I might do it one day. It's not off the cards. Um, but at the moment I have no inclination for that. The second part of your question is, if you had the space, would you have a dedicated room for the hobby with the table, models on display, and video, and hobby area all in one place permanently. Absolutely, I would love that. Um, I've sort of got a little bit more of a permanent setup now um, that I live in the house by myself. So my camera is pretty much always there on the tripod in the dining room, which obviously can't happen when you've got a partner. Um, but I would love to have a bit more of a hobby room with dedicated shelves, etc. I don't think I would put my army on display because I'm just scared of dust on the, the uh, models, so I don't think I would do that. But yeah, I'd love a bit more of a uh, set, like fixed place, especially where all my paints are, uh, to, to get the paints a little bit easier than I do at the moment. And uh, I can feel my nose getting blocked up as I talk. Oh well. Right, here we go. Uh, the next question is from... Griffin20 and he says if you wanted to start a new army on the cheap which would you pick also which figures would you go which figures would you start with and what kind of theme would you go for great question um, what I have an army all ready to go on the cheap that I haven't got to yet Excuse me, I can feel my throat getting very dry. Um, and that is an Aldar Iandin army. I've got a bunch of old uh, Wraith models. So Wraith Lords, a few characters. And, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and uh, it's ready to go. And I was given all those models uh, very generously. So I've got a cheap army waiting to go but I really want to get all of my other armies done before I start anything new. So yeah, there is another army in the wings as such. So the next question is from, now I believe this is a Russian name, um, so I'm not gonna try to pronounce it in Russian, but I will, if it is Russian. Um, I will say it, because he's also given me his name in English, so it's Sasha Dirin. And he says, how do you think, can we hope for Necron sub-faction, like Gene Steeler, Harlequin, Sisters, etc. Do you want such for Necrons? And if you want, what it can be? I hope for faction that relate with Triarchy and Silent King or Flayed Curse. Um, I'm not really into the sub-factions, etc. Give me my codex with the units that I have. I don't need any more new units. 
Um, I just need my codex. That's what I love. Uh, sub factions and my Space Wolves is a sub faction army, the 13th Company Space Wolves. And I had a bad experience with that where they made the army defunct uh, from the Eye of Terror Codex. And I, I'm not really into that sub faction thing. Just give me my codex, I'm happy. Thank you for the question though. Right, next question is from Um36. He says, What do you use to build your army? Do you use Battle Scribe at all? If so, what are your thoughts on it? Should it be trusted for building armies for tournaments? Okay, what well, I have a mobile phone, but it's a bit old and I've struggled to get apps on there. Um, I have attempted to use the Battle Scribe app. I have to say, I've found it a bit complicated, didn't quite understand it. Um, but what I, I do is I basically just use a Word document, um, or now Google documents, and I just like manually have my lists written out. Similar to this, that's how I do my lists. Um, yeah. Maybe one day when I get a newer phone, um, I will use Battle Scribe. Do I trust it? Mm, not always. I think it's a good idea to double check it, but then I need to double check my lists as well because that can be quite easy to make mistakes also. So I think either way you need to double check it um, or at least maybe get someone else to have a look at the, what you've done to double check it, especially if you're going to an event like a tournament. It's worth getting a, a second pair of eyes on it. So thanks for the question. Next one is from Mini Warzone, the king of Q&A, and thank you everyone who went over to his channel. I think he gained about 100 subscribers from my shout out, and I very much appreciate that. Uh, so Pete says, so when you sit down to paint, do you like to have everything out that you need, or just grab it as and when, as in paints, brushes, etc.? So when I paint, I have, just to move out of the way, I have this little hobby station and I take that into the other room so I paint in the, the um, living room and uh, I've got my light and my magnifying glass there and not all of my paints are there, I've got a little paint rack to the side and I've got a little toolbox with some paints in uh, but most of the paints are there. I do have to rummage for paints which is annoying especially if there's a paint that you need and it's, you rummage through and it's not there then you have to come out here and look at the paint rack. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so it's going back to the fact that I would like to have a dedicated space um, but that's how I hobby really. Just I use that Games Workshop station and I think it's awesome that station uh, but yeah sometimes finding paints is probably the most frustrating thing about it. Uh, thank you for the question, Pete. Next question is from Love Minis. And she says, Would you play Speed Freaks if your buddy had the game and gave you an invite? Absolutely, I would play any game um, if I don't have to like own it or buy models for it. So if someone has the game and they say, Do you want to try this out? I'd, I'd go for it. Um, I think, why not? Uh, it's a good experience. Um, I personally don't want to collect anything else apart from 40k, but uh, I'm more than happy to play the games, other games, if people have them. Um, as long as it's not too much at a, at a sacrifice of my 40k. So I pay, if I can, once a week 40k. So if the other game is on a different night, that's great. Or maybe occasionally we sacrifice the 40k for another game. Uh, but ultimately, I like playing 40k. So that's my thing. That is my thing. Right, the next question is from Ikari Shadow PVP. And they say, what will you do if someone tells you your Seraptic is fat? Me, I will punch them into a volcano and burn what's left. And you? Question mark. Uh, won't happen, I'm weak. <laughs> so, oh, this is easy answer. So, depending on what my opponent's army is, let's just say, for example, they're playing orcs. Um, I would say, well, yeah, he's fat because he's eaten so many orcs. 
for play Space Marines. I say, yeah, he's fat. He's he's eaten too many Space Marines. That's how I'd answer it, just in a fun way. Um, yeah. Okay. The next question is from Basic Miniature Painting, and he says, "Who would you have in your ultimate Star Trek crew? Say Kirk as number one, Riker as number two, etc." This is an interesting question. Okay. Number one, uh, the captain would have to be Kirk. Um, I think I put my trust into Kirk a little bit more, and I think Kirk is just a good leader as well. And he comes up with some like, different ideas to get out of situations. I think you can always trust Kirk to get you out of a dodgy situation. Plus, they do a fist fight for you as well, uh, so I think it'd protect you quite well. So Kirk, as a captain, my favourite first officer, as I said in the last Q&A video, is Riker. So I'm going to have to say Riker. I'm not sure how Riker and Kirk would gel. I think they'd be alright because Riker is in awe of Kirk. Um, so I think that'd be, that would be a pretty good combo actually. So. Kirk and Riker. Uh, my second officer would be Data, uh, just because he's just, you know, he answers any question that you have, doesn't he? So Data um, and Engineering. Now, this is a hard one. Numerical Worker, Scorsi. I'd like to say Taurus. She's a pretty good engineer. However, I think Geordie is the man because if you've got Data on the ship, Data needs a bit of support. And also, Geordie knows how to fix Data. So I'm going to choose Geordie. I've got a bit of a next generation going on here, haven't I? Uh, so the Doctor, the Doctor, I would have Voyager Doctor because he knows everything. Yeah, Voyager Doctor, and he could do lots of other stuff, can't he? He could take over the ship um, if you need to with his command um, programs and things. So, yeah, we're going to say the Doctor from Voyager. Um, who else have we got? Engineering, Doctor, First Officer, Second Officer. Okay, let's go for comms. Is it comms? Yeah, comms. Take the comm. Yeah, comms. Driving. Flying. Uh, Tom Paris. He's probably the one of the best pilots, I think. you got Zulu. Tom Paris. Because I like the, the Paris character. I think he's, he's a good character. Um, and then a random Ensign. Ensign. Kim. Harry Kim. Uh, because again, he's my favourite character. Uh, one of my favourite characters, and he jowls very well with um, Tom Paris. So I think that I think I've covered every slot. Uh, so yeah, that is my answer. Thanks for the question, Justin. All right, glasses on. The next question is from Drew Tavian, Eternal Reaper, and he says, regarding the question on new units, would you bring back the Pariahs? Okay, so the Pariahs, yeah, the Necron units that uh, was got rid of when they brought out the new Necron fluff. It's not often that Games Workshop do this, but uh, yeah, the Pariahs gone. Now there's a very big argument to say that the Pariahs didn't really go, they just changed the units and now they're Lich Guard um, or possibly Praetorians, I think more Lich Guard. Um, I wouldn't bring the Pariahs back because I don't think we probably need any more new units. I mean, I know I love Necrons, but my ultimate goal isn't to have a load more Necron units. Uh, that you know, I like the. I think we've got enough units basically, so I wouldn't bring them back. I've got my Pariahs with War Size, which I use as Lich Guard with War Size anyway. So yeah, I think the answer is no. I wouldn't bring them back. I would love to bring back a real Star Guard, 
Come on, Games Workshop. Just rewrite the fluff a little bit if you have to. But let's get a real undiscovered star guard back. Right, next question is from Spect. And he says, how much are you selling your chaps Titan for? I think everyone needs to hear this. So Spect, he's desperate to get my Warhound Titan, uh, which I won um, on a giveaway on YouTube from Wings Smooth Painting. It's an awesome um, prize and I'm very grateful of it. And it's, a ner it's painted uh, into Nurgle and it's magnetised, well, to be honest, it's not magnetised particularly well, it keeps like flopping down off the body um, and the pose, although it's very dynamic, his legs are quite spread and he's all a bit rickety uh, but he's got a very cool base. So he probably needs a little bit of loving, tender loving TLC. Uh, a little bit of TLC just to get him up to scratch but he's very well painted. Uh, so yeah, I won it. I've had it for about a year, sitting in my living room. I've enjoyed looking at it. I've enjoyed owning it. I don't think I'm ever going to use it. Um, and I've been wondering what to do with it. I have considered selling it. I got a bit of flack for that in uh, one of the Facebook groups, uh, saying that... Um, you, know, well, you should never enter, don't, well, I can't even remember what they were saying, but basically they were against me selling something that I'd won. Now, if I won it, so it's mine, isn't it? So it's mine to do what I like with. Um, but I have thought about selling it. I've thought about stripping it and repainting it um, as Empress Children. And I've thought about just keeping it and looking at it. But it is just sitting there collecting dust, so... You know, I could sell that and maybe buy some more Necron models. Uh, there's quite a few Forge World Necron models which I still need, like Tesseract Arcs, etc. So, you know, it is a possibility. And of course, there is uh, the question of price. How much do you sell it for? I believe it's about £800 to buy it new. And I said this one is painted. And it's got an amazing base. Um, I'll see if I can try and put a picture up uh, for you. In my head, I'm thinking £500 it's probably worth. But I know it's probably worth maybe more, maybe less. Depends. It's, it's worth what it's worth to someone who's buying it, isn't it? Um, but I think I have sort of a figure of £500 in my head. Uh, because if I got that, I could buy some very cool Necron models. Um, with it. So yeah, I've actually thought about the possibility of just doing my own giveaway with it and giving it away when I hit a big milestone on the channel. So that is another option. Um, so I'm, I'm just undecided what to do with it. As I said at the moment, it's just sitting there. I mean, when I entered the giveaway, I, honestly I didn't expect to win it. Um, but I did win it. And wow, I mean, it's so cool, and it, you know, I love it, it's great, but at the moment it's just an ornament, and I'm not really getting the full use from it. So, yeah, if you're interested in that model, then hit me up, maybe we could chat about it. Right, the next question is from the Chaotic Video Gamer. He says, my question for you is what would you say if someone came up to you saying that they would like to get into Warhammer 40k? I personally would suggest going onto YouTube and watching as many videos as they can and they try to think of two armies that they would love to play. I personally am interested in having a roster for home or game nights, a roster for my local games workshop and a roster for my local independent Warhammer 40k stockist. I would also suggest that they write up a shopping list consisting of Citadel models, Forge World models, any miscellaneous items I consider to be codex, case, dice, paints, paints, brushes, and any terrain or scenery that they may be interested in buying. Okay, um, my advice wouldn't be that. Uh, my advice would be to um, show them my stuff, basically. So I would say, well, 
now this is what's involved and uh, get I show them some models show them how I painted them and I would introduce them to the game maybe have a small 500 point game or a thousand point game to see if they like that um, have a chat about the prices and just explain you know that it's not exactly a cheap hobby but you get a lot of enjoyment from it um, <coughs> and uh, I think that's what I would do and really I'd just show them what I enjoy about the hobby explain that there's more to it um, I'd probably give them a few old white dwarfs so they can peruse through there um, that's what I would do I think yeah, that's what I would do. Right, next up is from uh, Any3KO. I'm not sure if you can pronounce that or not. I think it might be Nico. Anyway, he says, What do you think about Nurgle Necrons? What is Nurgle Necrons? Is that um, an army that's built of Nurgle and Necron bits that you can play either as Nurgle or as Necrons. If so, that is a you know, fairly good idea. I've seen someone do a Orc Necron army. I've always got some Orc parts and some Necron parts. I think it was done by White Metal Games. Actually, I think it was done for Goat Boy. Um, but, yeah, is that what you mean? If so, um, why not? It's a good idea. Right, next question is from Big Mech Dan Skull, and he says, Who is your least favourite Star Trek character of all time? This is a great question, Dan, thank you. Ideally, a re reoccurring character or a permanent character in one of the series or movies. Thank you, Dan, I like this question. Uh, it's always good to have Star Trek question. So, what I can tell you, and I'm not saying this is the least favourite character, I'll come to that in a minute, uh, but what I can tell you is the episodes, you know the episodes are generally based around a certain character each week, a different character, the episodes which I enjoy probably the least um, are the episodes that involve Dr Beverly Crusher, I don't find she has very good um, storylines, I mean, that one where she goes back to her grandma house and the spirit and oh yeah probably one of my least favourite episodes but um, is she my least favourite character? I need to have a quick think about this let me have a quick think about this so hmm I'm not editing this you've actually got to watch me think so least favourite character with you in a minute. Okay, I'm not going to keep you too long, so I am just going to say Beverly Crusher. I don't know how true that is, I'm going to have to think about that um, off camera, maybe um, let you know in the next episode or something, but for now the answer is Beverly Crusher, based on some of the storylines that she gets. Thank you for the question, Dan. Okay, the next question is from Helcarax26, and he says... Do you find yourself thinking about starting a new army and have to tell yourself, nope, not this year, maybe next year or so? No, I don't actually find myself doing that. And like I said, I've got other armies in the pipeline waiting to be done. So no is the answer. Um, I've got enough armies and I don't really think about starting new armies. I only started the Dark Elder army uh, because of a challenge that came up, otherwise that would never have happened. So I don't think about that. Um, and I know that although I've got quite a large Necron army, there's quite a number of extra units, um, duplicated units or Forge World units, etc. That I I still want. I still want to build up my Necron army. In some ways, I regret having some of my other armies. I think I wish I'd put more that money into the Necron Force, made the Necron Force even bigger than it is, um, 
But yeah, I don't really think about that. Next question is from Daniel Grant and he says, what is your favorite video you've made in the last 10 years? What is your favorite video you've watched that someone else has made? Thank you, Daniel, for that question. And this is a mega hard question. My favorite videos have been in the past uh, my Mirror Universe videos, which I did for the 3,000 subscriber giveaway. I was using Windows Movie Maker then, and I was doing some pretty cool special effects. And that video series, more than a video, but the series, because I made one video every day as an alternative Mirror Universe character called Nicholas, who wore a very dodgy moustache, um, was one of my favourite videos to make, uh, series to make, and it it brought me out of my shell because as this character I could do anything on the camera, and um, I had a lot of fun with that series. So that's definitely a highlight of my YouTube making video making career. However, I think probably my best videos have been my, um, the two videos I made in the Necron um, Call Tactics series. So that was the best Necron units and the top 10 um, tips for, for Necrons because I went all out on those videos, you know. Um, you know the, the longest videos to make and uh, the, 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 the most, yeah. <laughs> so I think those are the videos which I, my favourite videos. I'm still going to have to... Oh, my most favourite video. I'm going to say the best Necron Units one because I think that was the video that I really went to the next level in my video making um, abilities. So I'm going to say that one. Yeah. Right, thank you for the question. Oh no, I'm not finished. What is your favourite video you've watched? Oh wow. I've watched a lot of videos. According to Twitter, about 80,000 videos I've liked. Uh, I am going to go for the easy option, but it is a video which I really like. And that's the one that uh, Six Plus Devo and the Wargamers Unification guys made for me. Uh, like a celebration of Idic Beer video, which is just an amazing video. And, you know, I love you guys for making it. So I'm going to say that's my favourite video. That was fun to watch. Uh, yeah. Right, Andrew Mills. He says, "Have you ever had any experience playing any role-playing games, D and D, Warhammer Fantasy? And if so, do you enjoy it?" Uh, I've never played D&D, I've never played a role playing game, and I've never played one fantasy. I played Age of Sigmar once, but I've never done role playing. Just, I've not really had an opportunity to, to be fair, but for some reason it just doesn't really sort of appeal to me. I don't know why, uh, but I've never done that. Maybe it's because I never, you know, I wasn't into the hobby when I was growing up as a kid, maybe. Like I said, I got into the hobby when I was about 30, so maybe that is why. Right, my throat is so dry. Right, so the next question is from Zoon. And he says, Has anyone ever told you that you look and sound very similar to John Sopel? He's a BBC war correspondent, and he could easily pass as his younger brother. Uh, no one has ever said that. Um, I had to Google him, so I don't generally watch the news. Um, and, yeah, it's fairly similar to me, isn't he? I must admit. Uh, but no, no one's ever said that. Okay, so the next question is from Victor Quest, and he says, Do you delete old videos from your channel? When it comes to your hobby and YouTube content, what are your favourite videos to watch? What are the ones that you don't like much? So thank you for the questions, Victor. Um, I don't delete old videos. Um, it's actually quite bad for your channel to do that because you're effectively deleting watch time and your channel power. So I did keep all of my old videos there. Um, I am aware that my when I first started up, 
Um, I was using some copyrighted mu music, uh, which some of that have been flagged up as copyright, and I've had to change the, you know, you can have like YouTube change the music button. Um, I haven't had no warnings or anything for a very long time. <coughs> so I am aware of that, and that uh, deleting those videos would only happen because of any copyright issue infringements. Um, but generally, no. Um, no, I never delete any of the old videos because they're part of my YouTube journey. My old videos, to be fair, are shocking. But they are part of my journey. I say they're shocking. They're shocking because uh, my equipment, mainly. YouTube was different when I first started. It was all about rough and ready. Uh, but yeah, my equipment wasn't particularly good. I had rubbish camera, rubbish lighting, rubbish microphone. And the microphone not too bad, but definitely nothing like I've got now. And uh, obviously less confident on the camera. But it's part of my journey, so I don't delete them. Uh, my favourite videos to watch, I like hobby updates, um, I like just general chit chats. Um, my least favourite videos are basically not a video type but long videos just because I don't have time to watch them. So if, if, if a video's more than 20 minutes, I seriously have to consider whether I'm going to watch it or not. You know, it's a big commitment. Um, so, yeah, sometimes, and I've had to be a little bit more uh, st st stringent, if that's the word, with, with the videos that I watch, because I am to subscribe to over a thousand channels. I'd like to support the community, and I always like to watch every video that I can, but I have to admit, I have to, I've now got to the point where I think I'm just going to have to start skipping a few videos. The videos that I skip are long videos, usually battle reports or anything that's sort of half an hour, which is maybe on a topic which I've already seen, like Warhammer Conquest, uh, or an unboxing, you know, a 25 minute unboxing. I may not necessarily watch that, especially if I've already seen it being unboxed. So, you know, I've, I've got a bit more harder, let's say, when it comes to skipping videos. Um, it's hard though, because I'd like to support the channels, you know, that I that I subscribe to, but I do sometimes have to skip, uh, but not often, not often. And sometimes I'll go back to them if I've completed my subscription feed. I might go back to a video which I've skipped. So yeah, <coughs> right. Uh, come on. Uh, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. The next question is from Drunken Deer. He says, What is your opinion on cards being put into more and more Games Workshop content such as Shadespire, Champions, etc., in the sense that it is going to forwards to Magic Gathering and those other sorts of games? Bonus question. I'll do the bonus question in a minute. I'm going to stop the camera because I think I need to change the battery. Okay, so cards in games. I'm not a fan of it. Um, the only cards which I enjoy in games when I play Man of War, because they've got some magic cards, and they can be quite good fun. Um, but things like in Shadespire and that, I'm, I'm just not a fan of cards, really, in games, uh, personally. Um, and that's another reason why I... You know, all these new games that are coming out just really have no, I've got no interest in, especially with they've got cards in, makes it even less interesting to me. Your bonus question is, when you make the, when will you make at least one HQ, one squad of core troops for a fantasy game and play some Age of Sigma on your channel? Um, I suppose I'm sort of doing that with my Slanesh army. Gonna have demonettes and a demon prince in there, so uh, I'm one good thing about having the Slanesh army is I could potentially use that in uh, Age of Sigma, but I would have to have an opponent to play, and someone that knows the rules, has the rule book, so I don't want to have to invest in any money um, in terms of rule books and things. Well, are they free? Aren't they free for Age of Sigma? Anyway, it's not all about the money, it's about the time. 
you know, I don't want to have to invest the time in reading the rules. Um, but yeah, I suppose I sort of have it, don't I, with the slash. Next question is from Heresy Productions from Palmer, and he says, You like movies too, eh? Ever seen The Tree of Life? <laughs> so this was a, a fun question because I said that uh, The Tree of Life is the worst movie I've ever seen. And I have to be honest, I've not seen it all. So it is a bit judgmental from me because I've only seen the first probably 20 minutes. But from that, I could tell that was a dreadful movie. Dreadful. If you've seen it and you liked it, let me know. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I do need to watch the rest of it. It's not very often that I don't give a film a chance and watch all of it. But that Tree of Life, wow. What a dreadful film. Next question is from William Cubby and he says, Will you ever play an apocalypse game? Um, I'd be happy to play an apocalypse game again if I had someone to play with. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not against playing a, an apocalypse game. I know it's a big commitment, getting all your models out, playing the game, putting them all away, but I think it would be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so I would play one if I had the opportunity. Next question is from Wargaming with Gary, and he says, "How on off? How on off? How on earth do you get so many videos out and get around to all the channels and leave comments?" Um, well, get the videos out by planning. I plan the videos out about one or two weeks in advance. Um, I watch so many videos because it's what I enjoy and it's pretty much what I do. Um, excuse me, I watch occasional TV series, you know, with my daughter and stuff. Uh, but on the whole, I don't watch telly, I watch YouTube. If I'm painting, I've got YouTube in the background. Um, when I'm at work, I have YouTube on like a radio. So, yeah, basically, that's, that's all I do. <laughs> I just watch YouTube. In actual fact, let's have a look. Did you know that in the YouTube app, you can now see how many hours you've watched per day and per week, etc. So let's have a quick look at my stats, if my phone works. So whilst that's warming up, uh, here we go. Let's go to the next question. Time watched. So the next question is from Wargaming. No, sorry, not. it's from Wizard Wargaming. Here we go. So yesterday I watched seven hours 37 minutes of YouTube uh, which was 31 hours 9 minutes in the last week an average of 4 hours 27 minutes a day that's my stats for the, for that where I am now anyway yes Wizard Wargaming he says what is your favourite season of the year and why um, I dislike spring the most and autumn um, I hate it when the weather is just it's not hot or it's not cold or it, it looks nice and sunny but then so you wear, you know, you don't wear so much, you go out so it's freezing, the next hour or so it's raining. I hate it when the weather changes so dramatically. Uh, so those are the seasons that I don't like. Winter is my most favourite season for what I do, i.e. making videos because this room in the summer, the sun comes right through that window in the afternoon. So in the summer, I can only make videos in this room in the morning, which is why sometimes you see me in the other room with the white backdrop, because that means I've recorded those bits in the afternoon because the sun's run the other way. Um, and also it's more noisier. You've got like the lawnmowers going and the, the more just more busy outside. Uh, so it's noisy for when you're making the videos and painting as well. The sun's shining in. Um, you know, I've got the curtains like closed. And I'm painting and things. So I'm going to say the winter's probably my favourite season. But don't get me wrong. You know, I like a nice sunny day, um, and it's nice going. You know, going out and doing things. But you've got more commitment in the summer, haven't you? With things like gardening, you know, have to mow the lawn and do the bushes, and a bit more commitment. Um, so. I think winter is my favourite season. Next question is from Ironclad Hunter, and he says, 
Would you ever consider doing a 24 hour charity event such as painting and battle reports? I would consider it. Um, I need to, to sort out my camera set up for live streaming. Um, I need to get a mains lead for my camera, get the software to stream, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but that is definitely something that I would do. This question is from Braden W. Hickman and he says, do you have Murder Fang, the Dreadnought Wolven for your 13th company, Space Wolves? Any plans for Space Wolf Primaris? Um, no, I don't have the Murder Fang. I don't have any plans for Primaris Space Marines. My plans when I eventually get to them for my Space Wolves is Thunderwolf Cavalry. I want a good amount of Thunderwolf Cavalry. Um, I think that's it really. Yeah, I just need to get more wolves. You know, actual wolves in there. Um, yeah. Next question is from Navia666. And he says, Do you ever get bored with the same face on Necron Immortals or Warriors? I know that it's some sort of mask, according to the law, but it disturbs me that there's no diversity in the shape of them. I didn't know they were masks. Um... And no, I don't. I don't get bored with them because I love the fact that they all look the same and they and there's the uniformity of them. I know a lot of people think the Necron Warriors are old. Please, Games Workshop, don't make new Necron Warriors. Don't get rid of the green plastic rods. Keep the kit. The only suggestion is make a sprue of scarabs separate to the box of warriors. But no, I don't get bored. You know, I like that. You look at. Terminator, you know, the, the Terminators are all the same, they're all robots, the same face. Yeah, doesn't bother me actually, I quite like it. Next question is from Brush and Quill, and he says, What is the colour that you would. Ah, oh, now have I messed this up? Oh, I think that's the last one, last quick QA that I copied and pasted. Right, this, this question is, Would you ever purchase and paint a figure purely for the purpose of owning it? Even if it had nothing to do with your army, or even 40k, things such as 75mm busts, maybe something that just caught your eye, just for clarif clarification, I don't mean pre-painted collectibles, but a model you would have to build and paint. I think the answer is no, but um, I would be happy to do something different as, you know, for someone else, so either as a gift or a commission, be happy to paint something else that's not my army but I personally wouldn't go out and buy build and paint an, a model that's nothing to do with my army that I can actually physically play um, so yeah that's the answer and thank you for the question so the next question is from Bob Chon John quit John quit John quit yeah uh, Bob he says as a motorbike goes past. If one of your loyal viewers happened to be visiting your general area, would you be willing, under certain conditions, I suppose, to host a game with them for your channel? Your neck on terrain is amazing, thank you very much. And I'd love a chance to roll some dice on it, but I doubt that will ever happen as I live across the pond in the US. Um, absolutely, I'd be willing to play. You know, I'm, I'm quite happy to play. Um, a visitor to the UK. Um, I've got a spare bed, so it's yeah, it's possible. Um, as you say, under the right conditions. But um, yeah, I'm definitely open for gaming and playing with people and you know challenge games, etc. Um, but I don't travel well, so it's generally got to be at my house. Right, the next question is from Graham Collin, who says, What are your thoughts and feelings on this Article 13 <coughs> that the EU is trying to push through right now? And how much of an impact do you think it will most likely have on the YouTube tabletop gaming community? And then he's got a Star Trek question. Um, Article 13, I vaguely know what it is, but to be honest with you, I've sort of ignored it because... I can't change anything, it is what it is, um, and I try to keep my videos as copyright free as I can, 
Uh, so I don't use any images that I don't own. All the thumbnails don't have any images uh, that I don't own. And I don't have any music that I don't uh, have the copyright to. Uh, so cause I, I believe it's something to do copyright, isn't it? But um, I've ignored it really. I ignore all politics uh, because it's a load of it's a load of rubbish. <laughs> um, yeah, I hate politics, so I just ignore it. Um, yeah. Star Trek question. He says, if you were a Federation starship captain, what would your ship be called? I think mine would be called the USS Andrex because it would be good dealing with Klingons and Drex. <laughs> Sounds like a toilet roll. Um, what would my ship be called? Uh, I don't know, I quite like the idea of the Titan. I know, uh, Will, is it Will Riker's ship's called the Titan, isn't it? But for some reason, I quite like that. The USS Tyson. Yeah, that's going to be my answer. Okay, so the next question is from Blue Demonica, and she says, Do you believe that Games Workshop is going to replace regular Space Marine models with all Primaris models? If so, how do you feel about this upgrade? And what do you think should happen to the regular or old models? She's got another question as well, but let's answer that one. So, how do I feel? And do I think they're going to do it? I think yes. Their ultimate goal is to get rid of all the old uh, Space Marine models and just go Primaris. Um, <coughs> how do I feel about that? That's fine. Um, I, I will just use the old models. If I've got the old models, I'm, I definitely won't change them. And if that there are only rules for Primaris models, well, I'm just going to use my old models and say they're Primaris. Uh, because... Yeah, stuff you games workshop. <laughs> Obviously, you couldn't probably maybe go to a tournament doing that, but you know, for friendly games, it's fine. Uh, two, would you ever want to have or own a Titan Manipal? I had to Google that. Uh, so that is basically, I think, like a group of Titan, different Titans in an army. Is that right? Uh, how large would you want your Titan Manipal to be, aka how many models and what, which ones are they? I don't know anything about Titans I'm afraid, not not really. My Titans don't really interest me too much because, and the main reason for that is I just wouldn't play them, don't have opportunities to play them. Uh, I, I just prefer standard 2k games of 40k. What colour schemes would you paint them? What colour schemes? Uh, I have no idea. I'm into orange at the moment, so I'm going to say orange. Anyway, happy holidays, thank you. Rest up, and I will try and catch up on the videos I missed, laugh out loud. Thank you very much. I am feeling a bit better, but it's still hanging around. Okay, so the next question is from For the Emperor, and he says, Will Necrons get more models from Games Workshop? I think the answer is no. Um, I have my fingers crossed for my Star God, but I'm not holding any hopes out for that. I think, in truth, no, I don't think we will. Maybe one day, but not anytime soon. And that was the last question. So if you have a question to ask me for next month's Q&A, then pop it down in the comments box below. I really appreciate it. Beam me up.